In this lesson, we're going to talk about some of the problems involved in writing equations of translated conics. There are three problems from our homework. The first is uh, x minus 4 squared is equal to 4 times y minus 2. So the first thing we need to do is we need to figure out what type of conic this is. So if you recall, when we have just one squared variable, then we're going to have a parabola. So I have a, an equation of 4p y then as a formula is equal to uh, x minus h squared. And I should really put in 4p y minus k is equal to x minus h squared. Uh, but in this case, the k value is going to be, uh, I'm sorry, the k value will be 2. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find my uh, vertex of my parabola. So I take a look at the formula, y minus 2. The value for my vertex, uh, for the y coordinate, is going to be 2. And for the x coordinate, it is going to be 4. So I plot my vertex 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2. Here is the vertex of my parabola. Now I have to figure out if it faces up, down, right, or left. Well, I know that when I have a y is equal to x squared value, the parabola is going to face up. If it were minus y is equal to x squared, it would face down. If it were x is equal to y squared, it would face to the right. And if it were minus x is equal to y squared, it would face to the left. So now I have a parabola that faces up. Next thing I want to do is I want to figure out my p-value. My p-value is going to be the distance from my vertex, in this case, to uh, the focus of the parabola. So I have a 4y minus 2. So I can tell that my p-value is just going to be 1, because I want to figure out the value of p that makes this true. So I set 4p equal to 4, the value in front of the variable that does not have the squared value. And I see the p is equal to 1. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to identify also the axis of symmetry. I know the axis of symmetry is going to be vertical, vertical in this case. And it's going to run right through uh, the vertex. So here's my axis of symmetry. It's going to be uh, x is equal to 4. And then I'm going to move p units up into the parabola, which is up the uh, x equals 4 axis. So just one unit to identify my focus. So my focus is going to be 4, now 3. My vertex is 4, 2. And I've uh, identified my axis of symmetry. So the next step really is to graph the parabola. And now that I have the axis of symmetry, I know it faces up. I have the vertex and I have the focus. I can graph my parabola. Next step is to identify the directrix. And the directrix is just p units along the axis of symmetry away from the parabola. So I moved one unit up to find the focus. Now I'm going to move one unit down to find the directrix. And the directrix runs perpendicular to the axis of symmetry. So in this case, I plotted my point. It's on, it's actually the intersection of the axis of symmetry and the directrix. So I can now draw my directrix. Remember the definition, mathematical definition of a parabola is that the distance between the focus and any point on the parabola, and the directrix and that same point on the parabola are going to be equidistant. So I can also identify the equation for my directrix. So I know that it's going to be y is equal to 1, because regardless of what the value is for x, y will always be 1. In my next example, uh, this is going to be number 8. I'm going to write an equation for a problem with a vertex of 2, 1 and a focus of 2, 3. So let me plot these out. 2, 1 is my focus. 2, 1, I draw a point for my vertex. And 2, 3, excuse me, is my focus. So 2, 1, 2, 3. I know that this is my focus. So I know that the graph is going to face up because my focus is always inside the parabola. My vertex is this point here. So I, I'm dealing with an equation of 4PY minus K is equal to X minus H 
squared. Now I just have to fill in the values for P, K, and H to solve for this equation of the parabola. Well, I know my P value is going to be 2 because I have marked off two units from the vertex to the focus. So let me put in the P value of 2. So I have 4 times 2. My K value is going to be 1 because that's the Y coordinate for the vertex. So now I have Y minus 1 is equal to X minus my H value, which is going to be 2 in this case, squared. So now I have everything that I need to write this equation. And let me just graph this out as well. So I have 8 times y minus 1 is equal to x minus 2 squared. And I can leave it in this form to be done. Now I'm also going to find the uh, equation for the directrix by identifying my axis of symmetry just for fun. And identify my axis of symmetry goes right through the center of the parabola, goes to the focus, and also the vertex. And then I'm going to identify my point, which is on the intersection of the axis of symmetry and the directrix. And that point is two units in the opposite direction along the axis of symmetry. Um, so I mark off here, this is 2, 1. I have one, two units here. Here is uh, the intersection of the focus, or the uh, axis of symmetry and the directrix. So now I draw my directrix through that point perpendicular to the axis of symmetry. And I can write an equation for that line. It's going to be y is equal to negative 1. And the final question I'm asked to identify the lines of symmetry for this particular equation. The first thing I need to do is figure out what type of conic it is. I see that both values are both variables are squared, so I know it's not a, a parabola. I know that the denominators are different, so it's not a circle. And then I see that this value here is plus and not minus, so I know that it's going to be an ellipse. So the first thing I want to do is I want to identify the equation that corresponds to this ellipse. And it's going to be x minus h squared over a squared, because the a value is the larger value in this case, plus y minus k squared over b squared. So I see that my a value is going to be the square root of 36. So my a value is 6. And my v b value is going to be the square root of 16, or my b value is 4. My center is going to be located at hk. My h value is 2. So I plot this out, 1, 2. My k value is 0. So here is my center. Now, I know that in the case where the a value is underneath the x variable, I have a major axis which is uh, horizontal. So my axis of, or my major axis is going to be the x-axis, or when y is equal to zero. So I'm going to write major axis is going to be y is equal to zero. So there's my first line of symmetry. Now my minor axis is the next thing I need to work out. But let's graph the uh, ellipse first. So I'm going to mark off A units to the left and right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, to identify one vertex, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units to the right to identify my other vertex. Now I know my B value is the value of the number of units that uh, correspond to the units along the minor axis. And so I want to draw that here because it runs perpendicular to the major axis and it runs through the center. So I'm going to mark off uh, four units up. One, one, two, three, four. And then one, two, three, four down here. And now I have a drawing of my ellipse, which isn't very accurate, but the points are accurate. OK. So now I know that my minor axis, which is this red line, is going to be a value x is equal to 2. And I've identified my minor axis. I can also, just for fun, identify the foci of the ellipse. I know that c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared. So I have c squared is equal to a squared 36 minus 16 is equal to 20. So c squared is equal to the square root of 20, which we'll say for this case is just 4 and a half. 
So I can mark off my units one, two, three, four and a half, one, two, three, four and a half in either direction to identify the location of my foci. Uh, 